lesson two, you'll see how we use the feet in flat, demi point, and full point on the foot line, as well as closing in third, fifth, and first position. We've placed our positions now with flat feet, and we can place the arms just about anywhere. You should be able to recognize that. We need now to be able to use full point, demi point, as well as the flat positions. So let's go back to our basic first position. You'll notice that I'm placing it below the foot line or the floor line. Now I'm going to go on to demi point so I can show that very easily by placing the first position directly on the line. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to see when I use chalk on this white line, but notation paper is often done in red so that you can see the black line over top of the red. If I want to go on to full point, I'll just place it on top of the line, but still contacting. And in that way, I can show whether the feet are flat on demi point or full point. The same is true for fifth position, which I'll show with the right foot behind. And if I want to place it flat, it will go beneath the line but touching, or on top of the line, or sitting on the line. So now I've shown fifth position with the left foot behind, flat feet, on demi point, and on full point. That now allows me to show things like battement tendu. So I'll use again the right foot, and my left foot will be underneath me, and my right foot will be in front, sitting on the line. And that means that I'm in a point tendu devant. If I want to point to the side with my right foot, I will use a level sign, contact the line at the side. And behind, I've got my behind sign sitting on the line. You'll also notice that the relationship of the sign to the center line will help you to place it. Let's go back to the idea that we had at the beginning of of lights on our hands and our feet. So if I stand in first position and I point my right foot to the front, then from behind my light is close to the center line of my body and that helps me to place it. So immediately then you can see how I can use these same signs for on layer positions. I'll move over to this bar. And again, I'm keeping the left foot on the floor, but now I'm going to place the right foot halfway between the knee line and the foot line. Or I can go higher still and place it just below the waistline, which was what we would use for 90 degrees. I can do the same thing to the side or to the back. So let me show this position and we'll lift the leg just at knee height, so what we would refer to as 45 degrees at the side, like so. Now suddenly I have opened up a whole new field where I can show my leg in any position, front, side, or back, and at any level. Now we need to talk about movement, because up to this point we've shown static positions, but dancing involves transfer of weight and moving. So now I'd like to show how we're going to write closing positions. And I'm going to start with fifth position with the right foot behind. In order to show that the position has moved from an open position to a close in fifth, let's just say that I'm in a point tendu to second with my right foot, and I want to show that it's closing behind, I'm going to place an open circle at the back. And in that way, I've shown that my feet have gone from second position to a closing behind. As soon as you see this open line, you know that some movement has taken place. If I want to close it in front, I will use the in front sign. So I'm going back to my second position. And now I'm going to show that my right foot has closed in front. So I'm now going to do these four sequences, starting with the first one, my foot is at the side, and now this tells me that I've closed it behind, 
the next picture shows me I've pointed to the side again, and the next picture has shown that I'm crossing in front. The same pattern applies if I want to close in third position. It relates directly to my static position, so I'll show you what that looks like. Here is my static third, like so. And now, if I want to close in third at the back, it relates directly, but I use an open circle. And you can see that I've got a level sign with an open circle to the right side. The same is true for closing in front. This is my, no, that's not correct. I should have my left foot behind. So this is, would be my static position here. But now because I want to show that it's closing in front, that it's movement, I'm going to use my in front sign on the right side. So I will now do these four sequences. And I've pointed to the side, but I'm crossing in third now at the back. And then I point to the side again, and I'm crossing in third in the front. The only position left that we want to be able to close in is first position. And in first position, what we're going to use is what we call a contact sign. So a contact sign means that I'm contacting my body, and if I slant it to the right, that tells me that it's contacting the right side. And if I slant it to the left, I'm contacting the left side. And I'm going to use this sign to help me show that I'm closing in first position. So here's my static first position. And to show that the right side is closing in to show movement, I'm just going to use a small contact sign on the right. And this tells me that I was in an open position of some kind, and I'm closing into first with my right foot. If I want the left foot to close, then I'll show the contact on the left side. So let me just review again for you the closing signs in first, in third, and in fifth. And I'm going to use the left side for each one. Here I am closing in first on the left. I'm closing in front in third on the left. I'm closing in front in fifth on the left. I'm closing behind in third with the left foot. And I'm closing behind in fifth with the left foot. So from any position, I will close into first, third, or fifth using these signs. Now we'll show some positions with a demonstrator so that you can see again on the screen how the notation exactly will match what the dancer is doing. In the next six frames, we'll be showing the changes of feet from flat to demi-point to full point with the arms in bra ba and because the only thing that changes is the position of the feet we'll be showing Michelle's feet as demonstration in this frame you can see fourth position with the right foot in front notice that in the notation we're using an in front sign hanging from the foot line and on the left a behind sign now, having risen to demi point, the in front sign and the behind sign are written through the bottom line of the stave. That tells us that the placement is on demi point. Now you can see the in front sign and the behind sign sitting on top of the line, showing full point in fourth position. The fifth position sign is placed below and touching the foot line, showing a fifth position with flat feet. The arms are still in bra ba. Now the same sign is drawn through the foot line, showing that we are in fifth position on demi point. Notice that the right foot is in front and the left foot is behind. 
by placing the same sign sitting on top of the foot line, we have showed fifth position on full point. Now Michelle will demonstrate a position from Degage Devant closing in third position using the right foot. The arms are in second and have not been notated in the second frame because they haven't changed. Here, from the same position, Michelle will now close in fifth position with the right foot. Using the right foot at the back in full point tendu, Michelle will close behind in third position. Now, from an extended position at the back, a terre, Michelle will close in fifth position at the back. With the arms in second and the right foot extended to the side and fully pointed, Michelle will close the right foot in first position. Notice we are using the contact sign on the right to show that the feet have closed in first. <laughs>